Hey tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So it's time to work on the hammerhead. Um, this was from the Rhinebeck car show swap meet. It was a $265 deal if I remember it. And the engine starts right up, it runs, the lights work, all that stuff is great, but it kind of spit the output shaft out. The bearings went for the output shaft and literally it fell out. So <laughs> kind of a kind of a small problem. While we're looking at the go-kart, make note of the following. This uses a double chain drive. It's uh, two chains side by side. That's kind of important as we go through this discussion because it kind of messes up things for me a little bit. Anyway, so um, given that that engine <sighs> spit the shaft out and um, I mean some bad things happen, right? I mean that engine, at least the back part of it, has a bunch of... Uh, loose metal at this point. I don't know how much damage it's done or any of that other stuff. So what I did is I started pricing parts out. How much is it going to cost me for the various parts? And this um, there's, there's a piece back here that actually contains um, the bearings and all for this. The, it's called the uh, the back transmission plate, I think. Anyway, so I priced that. It was sixty-five dollars. Then you got to put the bearings in it and all that other stuff. And it's kind of like, boy, this is getting expensive quickly. So um, after that, y you know, I gave it a little while on eBay and was watching stuff go by so I can kind of get used to the prices. And I found. I can buy a whole GY6 150cc engine with the electronics and I got this for 155 bucks. So I'm like, this is great. All I have to do is take this shaft out of here, slide it on to that engine, bolt the engine to that frame and I'm all done. 155 bucks plus 265 I'm all good, right? So, and to take this apart, it's not that big a deal. You just take this bolt out. By the way, I had to take these bolts out before I could get a socket to slip in on the bigger bolt, but I, I have since put those back in. Anyway, you take this bolt out, and this shaft will slide out. Hopefully it cooperates, right? And there we are, we're done, right? So now I'm thinking I just have to put this over the other shaft and all is good. So I bring this over here and I start looking at it and I figure out pretty quickly that things are a bit different. See how long the threaded area is? So I'm looking at that and going, well, I'm not. Just, I'm still not sure. I'm, you know, in the bushes yet. Let's spend another few minutes at it. So, I brought this over and slid it on, and sure enough, the bolt did not poke through this side. It did catch the splines, but it didn't poke through this side. So I'm like, shoot, this isn't good. Um, then at that point you start making measurements because you don't know about these things until you, you kind of get them all in one place. What I did was I measured from here to the end of the um, gears here. And let me put some pressure on it. And when I did that, and I know people get bored at some of this stuff, but it came up with like four inches. 
So he said, okay, four inches, got it. Let me check to see what the one looks like for if it only has a single sprocket on it. And just so happens I have one of those engines. This came out of um, the blue cart, which is sitting on the side of the house. Anyway, I did that measurement and it came up with three. So, <laughs> if you buy one of those returned engines and you have a single sprocket, you can probably um, do a nice easy swap, right? No issues. If you have the double sprocket like I do, right, you consume an extra inch and if your particular engine doesn't have the extra long tail shaft, you're kind of out in the bushes. So, now where am I with this project? Um, I was hoping for an easy deal. It's starting to rain, so let me step inside for a moment. I was open, hoping for a nice easy deal. By an easy deal, um, the hardest part would have been pulling that reverse piece off, right? So that's what I was hoping for, and that's not what I'm getting. What does it mean? It means um, I could take that engine down there and put it on any of these other carts, except that one, <laughs> or I have to... Um, figure out if I can ran, run with a single sprocket type reverse gear and and use um, that one. One thing I got to warn you, once you take that big bolt out and slide that reverse gear off the shaft, um, it wants to come apart. Now in the case of mine coming apart, they kind of built it of sub-assemblies um so you you don't you don't have the problem of it spilling its guts so to speak that you know once it slides out you know you end up with uh uh three ring gears and all the needle bearings that hold the ring gears and the plate and everything else um that in my case they built it as a sub assembly and everything did not fall out but yours might. Remember, these are always a little different. I also looked them up on the internet. And the ones I looked up on the internet were different where the cable went. The ones I looked up on the internet, you were able to take this apart and kind of slide the cable onto something and put it back together again. In my case, you have to take this all apart to get the cable end out of it. And same for the one down in the driveway. So, if you're watching videos, um, trying to find out if you can get examples of exactly what's going on, it probably will not be that easy. Um, the engine that's on the red cart, um, on the red hammerhead, um, that engine has to come off the frame anyway. Um, so, probably what I'm going to do is take it off and open it up and see kind of what it looks like in there. Uh, the bearings weren't horrible expensive. I, I think they were somewhere around 50 bucks. I think the plate was 60 and the bearings were 50. I think there's three of them, believe it or not. Um, so what I might do is take it apart and look at the bearings. I also have a couple of other engines floating around. I might also take it apart. Um, well, it's got to come apart no matter what, but I might take the, uh, sh the shaft out of the shaft that's already out of it and put it into one of the other engines and slide it all together. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. I was hoping for something easy, and uh, it's, it's not turning out that way. Um, but, but on the positive note, I didn't get bit by a tick today, so it's a great day. <laughs> I got my hook all greasy, though. I might have to buy a new hook soon. This one's getting pretty trashed. Um, anyway, 
So there we are. I guess I guess what I'm doing is I'm making a cautionary, a bit of a cautionary tale. If you have the double sprockets on your reverse gear, you um, you might have trouble with shaft length if you buy your standard GY6 engine off the internet. You might end up having to start um, swapping out final drive shafts or you might have to look into going to a single chain type drive. That reverse gear is expensive so going you know saying oh I got a double let me go buy a single um, that's going to be expensive. Um, this is the first double that I've seen maybe other guys who know more about hammerheads said oh no the doubles normally common maybe that's true but this is the first one I've seen um, and even when I see replacement ones they typically sell them with single sprockets not double sprockets um, those two sprockets are a one piece um, but I think they they could come off the reverse gear and I think I could replace them with a single. Um, so my problem is that that rear end has a double on it. So I'd like to, I'd, I'd really like to do it right and get the double back on. So we'll see. We'll see if I cheap out and end up going single and kind of, you know, close my eyes and my ears and let it be. Or if I'm, uh, if I'm going to continue to play mix and match part games until I get it put together quasi properly all right i want to thank everybody for watching and commenting and subscribing please remember to keep your feet down keep your heads up and get out there and enjoy each and every day bye now